Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again with another helmet video for you. Now this is kind of a weird helmet video for you because uh, this helmet isn't well, really well known. It's overshadowed by another helmet of the same name and the fact that n not really all that many of these were made and not ever used on top of that. Um, this is the US Navy Mark 7 ship to shore or gunner combat helmet. Um, it's a helmet made for use by machine gunners and crewmen on a vessel that are um, going to be participating in ship-to-ship -ship small arms combat or ship-to-shore small arms combat. So it's basically a one-size-fits-all type infantry helmet. Um, and it's meant to be stored for quite a long time and hardly ever used. And that's why there's not very many of them around because there's not many um, ships that do like ship to shore combat and stuff like that anymore. Um, so it's basically just a Kevlar shell. It's a big, huge, massive Kevlar shell. And it has this weird kind of construction style liner in it that you can adjust. And it has a chin strap that's kind of a universal size. Now this is actually a Pazgat chin strap. Now I've seen some of them with the Pazgat chin strap. It doesn't seem like very many did get the Pazgat chin strap, which is actually an upgrade from the regular chin strap. Now the regular chin strap was just kind of this mess that had a little kind of clip press buckle, like the little side buckle. Um, and then it had just a chin cup that was just a loop over a, the regular just one uh, like strap of fabric chin strap that would just slide around that you could adjust. Uh, this is actually a much more stable, much more um, nice chin strap because it doesn't adjust on the fly while you're using it and the snap is much more secure and uh, everything like that and it seems like the ones that got this this kind of weird kind of gray green chin strap because it's its own chin strap this isn't like a normal pasga chin strap it's not olive it's not uh like acu it's this weird kind of chin strap color that matches the mass gray color of the shell um so it's a weird kind of chin strap color, Pazgat color, but it is basically just a Pazgat chin strap. And how it works is it, it you know, they, they put it on there, I guess, to replace the regular chin strap because they were too prone to adjusting uh, on the fly when people were using them. And only after they got rid of a ton of them, the few that they kept got the Pazgat chin strap upgrade. I don't have any like documentation or paperwork that I've seen like that, but I've seen some like later ones after a bunch came onto the market that had the regular chin strap, the ones that it seems like they kept, a lot of the second batch that got sold off, because I don't think these are used anymore, a lot of the second batch that got sold off um, had the Pazgat chin straps on them, um, which was very few. So, um, but most of them you'll find will have a different chin strap. Now, there wasn't that many made. Uh, there was only a couple thousand ever made and they're they were made in kind of the mid 2000s in response to a purpose that the navy thought they might need them for and then turns out they really didn't they're all in usually very good shape like this a lot of them are used in like training exercises and you could find those that are kind of beat up and used but for the most part a lot of these just kind of sat uh next to the armory on the ship and were never touched so they're they're basically brand new but they're they're 3a rated kevlar helmets um so they're they're basically the same protection rating as a Pazgat, but for those of you who have a super, super large head, um, this is actually a really, really good design because it'll go out to like a size 64. Um, now mine does have um, a few little issues with it, uh, as I'll show you when we flip to the flip the liner over and uh, take a look, a uh, more closer in-depth look at it, but uh, this helmet doesn't have all that cool of a history or anything like that because they were never used, um, but they are still quite interesting. And so we'll flip the uh, camera around now, take a look at the liner and the chin strap, and then we'll flip back around and we'll show you uh, how uh, it looks being worn. And this helmet is absolutely gigantic, but it's a one size fits all, very adjustable helmet, which makes it very cool and practical because it is a simple kind of one piece shell design. It's a very round design, so it's very good, I, I would guess, at kind of deflecting and defeating threats. And it, it is be able to fit anyone with an extra small head to like an extra large head, um, which is also good if you're somebody that likes to run a gas mask or winter gear, which makes it very easy to adjust for that, um, which a lot of helmets with pads really can't do. And it has a huge styrofoam ballistic 
uh, like styrofoam impact liner uh, that we'll take a look at. So stay tuned for that. Alrighty, so here we are looking at the inside of the Navy Mark 7 uh, ship to shore, ship to ship helmet. And uh, here you can see the, the weird kind of gray green Pazgat chin strap, just like the shell. Um, and here's the liner. The liner is this kind of weird herringbone with this weird kind of just, it's not really a pad, but it's just kind of a piece of fabric with little cuts in it that keep all the straps from like flipping over and stuff like that. Um, the chin strap works just like a normal Pazgat chin strap. It kind of will rotate and move. This one's kind of a little stiff, um, but they both on will do that. And uh, the sweatband on it is actually just this plastic piece, just like in a, in a construction helmet. And it's held in place with little uh, pegs on these gray pieces that fit into, you can adjust the kind of height and how you want it to sit um, via these little, I don't know if you can see in there, see that little peg sticking through these holes? So you can adjust it like that. Now mine, as you can see, has these this weird kind of uh, splits in the liner. Now that can be fixed with glue or something like that probably. I haven't got around to it, but um, it's just because they stack these helmets, um, you know. So this put pressure on this part of the helmet and it caused that to happen. It caused the, a bend and eventually uh, a splitting to happen. Um, but it still works just fine. Uh, the splits don't go very far on either side. Um, the helmet works just fine. A lot of them have that, the ones that weren't really used or stored well. Because um, in a lot of ships they just had like this big kind of cylind uh, like pipe or like rebar like cylindrical stack and you, you would grab one and just lift it out of this big kind of vertical tube where there would be a bunch of them stacked. So, you, so you'd grab one from the top like this and lift, lift it straight out and then there'd be another one below it. So they were sitting on top of each other for forever. And this one could have just been one that was near the bottom of the stack. Uh, and so a lot of weight was putting pressure on this kind of sweatband type thing. Um, now the sweatband is kind of covered in this like jersey knit type fabric. It doesn't really stick all that well, um, but there is foam around it. Um, so it does kind of come come loose a little bit, but once again, that can be pretty well fixed with just a tad, a little bit of super glue or something. Um, it, it stays in place for the most part. And then here in the back, obviously, um, you can see the adjustment uh, little ring here. It's just the screw dial. Um, so you can adjust it to go outwards. And um, it does have little little markings here on the side. Um, so I can get all the way out. So it'll tell you on the side. And if I adjust it out to as big as it possibly goes, it'll go to a, like a size eight and a half about uh, head size, which is pretty large. Um, and uh, it'll go all the way down to a six and three quarters. So if I adjust that there, there you go. That's as small as this helmet will get head circumference wise. Uh, and it works quite well. Um, it's actually a very, very stable helmet despite having only a two point chin strap because of these, the nice grip that these kind of jersey pads get on your head. And obviously because this nape comes down so low, um, as you can see, it kind of sticks below the the line of the helmet there and uh, it comes down so low and it actually works quite well at, so, at uh, distributing the weight and fitting under your head well and obviously you see you have this big huge like three quarter inch kind of full impact liner going all the way around this helmet it breathes really well for like hot environments uh, and stuff like that it's not super heavy the weight is distributed incredibly well with the suspension uh, that's in it and this kind of liner. So I'm, I was actually very impressed with how nice this helmet is for as big as it is. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you that here when we flip the camera around. I'll show you how big this thing actually is being worn on your head in order to accommodate the people with the huge like, you know, size 8 plus uh, heads. So we'll do that right now. We'll flip it around. I'll show you how it is being worn and uh, cover some little basic last life history of this helmet even though there it didn't really ever have a life and we will conclude the video Alrighty, so here we are back again with the navy mark 7 i'm gonna adjust it out to put it on my to fit my head here and i'll put it on and then we'll tighten it down to wherever it is comfortable just right about there. And as you can see, even without the chin strap, this is still, despite being a bulbous, like fairly high sitting helmet, it's actually quite, quite stable. And then adding the chin strap, obviously would just uh, make it even more stable. But it's actually an incredibly ahead of its time design. And I, I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. Uh, and I like this chin strap better than the, uh, 
other chin straps you find on this. Pazgat chin straps, much more comfortable, less prone to adjusting, much more durable, but it is, it is a very stable helmet. It'll run night vision just fine if you have a ratchet strap and a shroud for it. You throw like an ACH shroud on this, you could run night vision on it. Uh, and everything like that. It doesn't have a lot of screw holes or anything to like put rails on if that's what you wanted to do. Um, but it is actually a, an incredibly uh, good design and I'm quite impressed with how this design kind of fits and uh, works and looks and stuff. Because um, it's, it's actually a surprisingly comfortable helmet for as large as this thing is. Um, they didn't serve all that long. They served from about the mid 2000s. I'm sorry, about the early 2000s. Um, you know, uh, aboard some ships. A lot of them you kind of see towards the end of the uh, 2000s. Uh, they start uh, before the like 2000 teens. You basically see all of them out of inventory and they're being replaced uh, um, very uh, by various ACHs and lightweight helmets and other type helmets that were, mu were much better designs. This wasn't really a good a good design or anything uh, like that. It, it was it, there really wasn't a point in having a special helmet for this purpose, you know what I mean? I understand, you know, not knowing who's going to be on the ship and then you have to get into an engagement and then needing a helmet that fits everybody, um, but it's not really necessary. It wasn't really deemed necessary, so these didn't last long um, and they were hardly ever used and eventually they were just phased out for other helmet designs that were uh, in practice. There, were, This would have been used alongside various, you know, steel helmets um, in certain ships, and it would have been used alongside Pazgats. A lot of ships would have had Pazgats for a long time rather than these, um, and eventually they, like I said, were replaced by ACHs and lightweight helmets. Um, so we were going to, we're going to flip around now, uh, spin, and see how this helmet looks, uh, from various different angles. So this is obviously the front profile. Uh, this is the right side profile. This is the rear profile. Now, if you're using your vest, like if you are in ship to ship or ship to shore combat, uh, you will also have a vest. This did serve alongside the Pazget vest, actually, um, along with later forms of body armor. And so they have collars on them, and this helmet uh, does not have bite, even with this big, huge dial and everything that sticks way far out. It, it doesn't bite. I can fully look up, it doesn't want to rock forward. Um, so I could be lying prone on a ship or something like that and still use my rifle without worrying about it rocking forward and obscuring my view. Um, and then here's the left side profile. So this is a very, very interesting helmet. Uh, not, not a really, really cool history, but um, it's an interesting piece that the U.S. Navy would go out of their way to, you know, think of this and this helmet to come into being and then for it to be used and for its purpose and everything. It's kind of cool uh, and it's got a neat kind of design. Uh, and stuff to it in that form of history, despite never really being used in any engagements or conflicts or anything like that. It, it's still a neat piece of U.S. military history. So, uh, hopefully you liked this video. You subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Uh, this helmet is indeed for sale if somebody would like to purchase it. I'm selling it for about 170 U.S. dollars plus shipping. Uh, I cannot ship it outside the United States as it is uh, considered current body armor because it is made out of Kevlar. Um, and ITAR laws will not allow me to do that uh, within reason. Uh, so if you are interested, please leave a comment. Let me know. We could work something out. And uh, hopefully I can get this helmet to a uh, collector's home. They are incredibly rare. And this one is in pretty good shape. Not even really any marks on the, the helmet at all. So hopefully you like this video. You subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Um, and if you choose to support the channel, uh, that would be great. Uh, I have links to the Patreon in the description. Um, but if you don't, uh, or you can't, that's all right too. Just please watch the video, like the video, comment, and stuff like that it helps me in the algorithms, which is going to allow me to, uh, collect more ad revenue from YouTube, which is a good way to support the channel as well. So thank you all for stopping by, and hopefully I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye now.